Good Sunday morning, everyone. How's it going? Got some football today, some playoff football. Gonna be, we've already seen both one seeds get pushed out, one and done. Don't see that every day, so that's certainly already a pretty compelling weekend of playoff football. And today we're going to find out about the Chiefs, we're going to find out about the Bills, we're going to find out about the um, the uh, Buccaneers, we're going to find out about the Rams, we might end up with a nightmare scenario NFC title game, two divisional foes meeting up, possible. We'll talk about that if it ends up coming to pass, but uh, this video, not really about that. I want to talk about something I saw on field goals uh, yesterday. Something that got posted yesterday. A lot of you people probably already are aware of this fact. A lot of you people would probably say, well, that's not surprising, all things considered. But um, I wanted to talk about this for a little bit because this is one of the things that I uh, harped on a little bit down the stretch of the 2021 season. I, I talked about how you could really see the Seahawks fan base losing interest in this team and not being willing to throw their full devotion behind the team when they started losing, when they started playing bad, when they started embarrassing themselves. Um, the, the, the fans did not necessarily stick with the team the way you might see some of these other fan bases do. And I, I've called this fan base, they can be a little bit fair weather. Uh, I've, I've called them a little bit fair weather before. And I know that sounds like a pretty derogatory term, and to some people maybe it is, but... I, I get it. Like, time is money. Time is valuable. We all have things we need to do that have nothing to do with football. Maybe you've got kids to raise. Maybe you've got a job to do. Maybe you've got a side hustle where you're trying to make extra money. Maybe you want to go hiking on your Sundays. Maybe you want to go do all these other things. You don't have time to watch a bad, embarrassing, losing football team. And that's what the Seahawks were in 2021. So, I, I, don't, I don't blame people for um, ditching the Seahawks in 2021, a year that was supposed to be great, but ended up being pretty awful. But I want to talk about the numbers behind it, because I've referenced before that home game against the Cardinals, where the crowd was just booing the team basically the whole game. I talked about how the last few home games, you saw there were a lot of empty seats. There are a lot of empty seats at Lumen Field. And some of that was probably because those were not compelling games on either side, but still, but then you see something like this, where the Seahawks had one of the NFL's biggest local TV rating declines in 2021, and you can put a number behind it. So I'm not going to go through this whole article, but it talks about some of the stuff that I was talking about with the home games not being packed. But um, the, the crux of the article is Sports Business Journal has the local TV ratings for the regular season. The Seahawks local TV ratings for 2021 dropped 14%. 14%. Um, the Houston Texans had the largest decline at 18%. But 14% was damn near close to the top. They, there were some other teams that saw some similar declines, like the Bears and the Giants. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because the Giants were downright unwatchable by the end of the year. The Bears, their offense was so bad, they were virtually unwatchable. Um, the Steelers, who actually did barely make the playoffs, had a decline of about 10%, but they were not a particularly compelling team this year. So it, it kind of makes sense that these would be the teams that you see a big drop down on. But the Seahawks' drop in viewership is, to me, kind of notable because this year is considered by some people to be kind of an aberration. Like, oh, we made the playoffs last year. We made the playoffs the year before. We made the playoffs the year before that. We make the playoffs pretty much every year. We have one bad year. And, and by the way, the end record that we ended up having, 7-10, and 10, is not even indicative of how bad this really was. You, you got you to gotta remember that um, we were 3-8 and eight season basically in the toilet and then we went uh, a four and two over our last six. So seven and ten doesn't even really do it justice. This was one of the worst teams in the league until the games barely mattered. And three and, and several of our wins at the end of the season were against awful teams, terrible teams. So it makes sense, but it's interesting to see a number on this. The team has one bad season, 
and the fans are immediately ready to drop them and find something better to do with their Sundays or Mondays or Thursdays, I guess. Or in one case, Tuesday. Uh, they, nah, I'm not, not going to say that very often. But um, it really helps contextualize the fact that this fan base will not stand for it. We have a fan base that is perfectly willing to show up, spend money, go scream for three hours at home games, do all these things if the team is good, if the team earns their loyalty and earns their time, money, and effort. But as soon as the team stops earning that, they're getting out of there. And I don't think they stop being a fan. I don't think they bandwagon the Chiefs. I don't think they bandwagon the Bucks. I don't think they bandwagon other teams. I think that they just decide we're not going to invest any time into this. We're just not going to watch the games until this team gives me a game worth watching, which I understand. So I hope that somebody like a Jody Allen or a Chuck Arnold, maybe even a Pete Carroll, but mostly those two guys, the guys at the very top, Jody and Chuck, I hope they see this and they realize what they have on their hands. This was, this was a quick drop off, right? Because unlike a team like the Houston Texans, who were basically taking 2021 off, right? Everybody knew that the Houston Texans were going to be terrible this year. They had a coach they basically treated as an interim coach despite hiring him. They had um, their star quarterback sitting on the sideline the whole year. They knew. They knew they were going to be terrible. And that's a team that has not had a lot of success lately. They did have a couple of playoff years with Watson, but um, the year before, they were pretty trash again. What, what were they in 2020? Like uh, 4 and 12, 5 and 11, something like that. So it was kind of a step-by-step -step process for them. The Bears had been 8-8, eight and eight, I think 8-8 eight and eight the last two years. The Giants haven't been, have been one of the worst teams in the league over the last five years. So them losing their viewership was something that was kind of precipitated by several years of being hard to watch. At least, well, at least a couple years of being hard to watch. This team has one bad year, and people are getting the heck out of there. So, this fan base is not going to stand for it. This is what I mean when I say that this isn't going to last too much longer one way or the other. Um, I do think it's possible. I, I said in a recent video, and some people were like kind of sad when I said it, I said that I think that Pete Carroll could coach for another four years if things go well, but understand that's predicated on things going well okay because it went down 14 percent one of the biggest drops in the nfl off of one bad season where are we going to be after another bad season what if 2022 goes bad for this team i don't think that number is going to go up number is probably going to keep going down we're busy people we got stuff to do we got things to worry about that are bigger than football but we're willing to put that stuff on the back burner if you give us a product worth watching but if you don't, then we won't. So I hope Jody and Chuck see this and they understand that, look, you're bringing back Pete for 2022. I understand that. Nothing can undo that at this point. It's too late now. Realistically, it's too late. You can't move Pete now, I don't think. I mean, if you do, it would at the very least be a bad practice because you're, you took too much time. But I hope you understand that we're not just going to sit here and let you give us more bad seasons like this. And we're just going to keep watching, keep spending money, keep going to games. We're not. The numbers prove it. This fan base is, in some definitions of the word, fair weather. And we will find better things to do. And I don't blame them. So yeah, I, I just found this kind of interesting because it really helped put a number on the fact that this team was... I'm sorry, this fan base was quick to find something better to do with their time when this team started playing bad. Like, not me. I watch all the games. I watch all the games because I need to see what's going on. I need to see what the problem is. I need to see where the team is still doing well, where the team is improving, where the team is getting worse. I want to see these things so I can talk about it. But to the people out there who aren't in interested in that, you know, most fans, they just want to win. Most fans, they just, they're happy if the game ends and they have more points than the other team and they're sad if they have less points than the other team, period. For them, if you're not giving them something worth watching, they're not going to watch just to be loyal, just to be faithful. They're going to find something else to do. And, you know, I personally have said before that if you don't like the way the team is being run, if you don't, uh, if you don't like the way the team is conducting their business, but you still want to keep watching because you want to see if things improve, 
it's like that whole idea of not deciding that you're going to dislike a movie until after you see it. You still have to keep watching the product to see if things are actually going in a direction that you like. But, you know, don't don't go to the games. Don't give the team any money. Don't buy any merchandise. Uh, I, I I haven't gone to a game in years. I um, I mean, I bought merchandise in recent times, but not not lately. Not over the last. I don't think I've gotten any Seahawks merchandise for the last year outside of the uh, giveaways I do on this channel, and that that's how you can show that even though you are still a fan, you are starting to lose interest because the team is not performing. So. Obviously, what has needed to be said this offseason has already been said. This is not about me trying to say, hey, Jody, look at this, 14%. You got to get Carroll out of here. But understand that it's only going to get worse if the team doesn't start winning. If the team doesn't start performing, I, 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 I just, I hope somebody up there understands that if things do not turn around quickly, you're, you're going to be looking at a team that nobody's watching. You're going to be looking at home games that people don't go to. This fan base is not going to keep filling the stands and tuning in en masse on um, on uh, Sundays just because the team is playing, just because the team exists. I think some people, some people are just happy that the team exists and they don't need the team to be one of the best teams in the league. They just need the team to be entertaining sometimes and to them that's good enough, but that's not most of us. So 14% off of one bad year, guys. That's big. That shows that we're not putting up with it. We will find better things to do with our time and our money. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. And Jody, Chuck, everybody in that ownership group, take note. That number will go down by another 14% if you have another crap season, I think. Would not surprise me at all. We will find better things to do. See you later.